Hi, welcome to The Light of Deception. Today I'm going to continue introducing the booklets we have at On the Path Ministries that you will find at Calvary Old Path. So that's calvaryoldpath.net under Docs and Documents. You'll find them there. They're actually being revamped, so they're getting into a readable form. They're, right now, if you there's eight of them that are there, and if you open them, they look like they're scrambled in a publisher, but a PDF format. So those are going to be put together in a way that's readable for you and printable for you very soon. That's being worked on now. But you can also find them at the Light of Deception under Booklets and Testimonials. You'll see that the Free Gift of Salvation is there in the readable format and printable format. you also find that Our Final Destination is there, and that's the same way for you. You'll find also Universalism and under Apologetics, and you'll find the Emergent Church Movement is there and Christian Science under Apologetics. This is another one that's going to be under Apologetics, too, that's coming up at um, not only Calvary Old Path, but also at, under oldpaththeology.net with um, Pastor Chris Quintana. It will be up as, as well there. So I want to give you a brief under this Apologetics that's going to be um, up really soon, and this is going to be talking about what is the emergent church, like I was talking about, that you can find also at the Light of Deception. And it says apologetics, so I want you to tell, you to tell you what that means. Apologetics is a religious discipline of defending religious doctrine through the systematic argumentation and discourse. So it's a, a proving of why is the emergent church something we wouldn't teach and why are we sticking with the Bible alone? Why isn't it that we're inviting new things into the doctrine and being more progressive in our teachings and being in the here and now and bringing in the world to bring in the world? Why are we not compromising with the Word of God? Because we're not living in biblical times when the Bible was written, we're living in now, so why aren't we bringing in the new stuff to bring in you know, the people, so why aren't we asking the worldly popular stuff to be in the church so it gathers the people into the church because it blurs the line and you and the world look the same. That would be the reason. Why are we doing these old path booklets on, on the path ministry the, for this discernment ministry of um, Calvary Old Path? It says because, here, this is a good way to know it, these are the scriptures that we're holding on to. Your word is the lamp to my feet and the light on to my path. So the word is the lamp to my feet and the light to my path. The entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. So we're keeping it simple. It's about the word of God. So this is Psalms 119, 105, and 130. So this is what the context of this booklet will look like. It says these are the areas we will be covering to help you understand our beliefs regarding what is taking place in the emergent or and or emergent church emerging or emergent church okay number one we're going to be covering the emerging church versus the emergent church two inside the emergent church three what does the bible tell us about itself and four important questions to consider and then five warnings to the church and number six is what can we do so I'm just going to kind of give you the introduction to this and the closing closure to this, and you can go print it out at the Light of Deception booklets if you like right now, or you can wait for it to come up on Calvary Old Path, um, CalvaryOldPath.net. Um, it will come, be up there very soon. It says the emerging church versus the emergent church. Some people use emerging and emergent church as representing the same thing. Technically, they are different. The emerging church, generally speaking, tends to recognize the reality of absolute truth. Many have a high regard for the authority of Scripture. They will proclaim the gospel of salvation by grace through faith in Christ alone. To reach the postmodern generation, they change the way they present the Word of God. They differ from evangelicals in their method not their theology position. They are more cutting edge with their music, media, and other ways of communicating the message of the gospel. So they're changing what they're doing to reach the the culture. Um, instead of going out to the culture with the, gros- the gospel, you're bringing that culture into the church. The emergent church is a group within the emerging church movement, the emerging church movement, while the emerging church has changed their methods of doing things to reach the postmodern generation, the emergent church has accepted the postmodern worldview 
to the extent of changing the message. They are the latest form of liberalism and they have chosen to accommodate postmodern thinking. The gospel is based on scripture and cannot be changed and remains truth. The gospel is based on scripture. That's true instead of the post postmodern way of thinking. So the gospel is based on scripture and cannot be changed to remain, to remain truth. If it is changed, the result is a false gospel. The postmodernists have moved from the rational, factual mindset of experiential and mystical thinking. What might be right for one person may be wrong for someone else. There is no absolute truth. If the Bible is not the source of absolute truth and personal experience can dictate what truth actually is, then the gospel becomes meaningless. Their focus tends to be on building God's kingdom here on earth, which includes working for social justice and environmental causes. It is more about the here and now than eternal salvation. Their goal is building relationships with which unite people across denominations and other religions. They strive to reach the postmodern generation for global change through the good works within local communities throughout the world. It may sound good, but is it? If you're changing the meaning, and the meaning is different for everybody, is transformed to a postmodern thinking, and it, whatever it means to you, then it is for you. So where is truth within experiencing things? How can you guide, where's your guidelines if it's not from scripture? So, and if you're building the kingdom on earth that it, we're supposed to be inheriting that Jesus brings back, then what kingdom are you building? So be very, very mindful that the enemy is very tricky and he can stir people up to feeling good. So it's all about your feelings, your emotions, and things that are, you know, and mystical and um, you're, you feel all fluffy and enlightened and all these different things. Remember that the enemy is the fallen angel of light and he can give you a false delusion that you're doing something that is good that's absolutely anti-biblical and is not from the word of God but is from the familiar spirits right because it's not only that that Lucifer is a fallen angel of light but his the demons can be transform themselves to look like you know the ministers of righteousness so be very careful if it sounds good question is it then that's going to be inside the emergent church like we we're talking about. What does the Bible tell us about itself? The inerrancy of scripture is here for you. And then tampering with the word of God. There's warnings there about doing that. And then it's well, some questions to, be, to consider that might be important for you. And then we're going to be talking about warnings to the church. This is called apostasy, so you have to be very careful. From the Greek word apostasia, meaning means defection, departure, revolt or rebellion so basically spiritual apostasy threatens the body of christ in biblical times and continues to do so that's absolutely true so in second um, corinthians 11 13 through 14 the apostle paul describes an apostasy this way for such men are false apostles deceitful workers disguising themselves as, as apostles of christ no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. That's kind of what I was already saying, right? And then it says, he warns in Acts 20, 29 through 31, that after he leaves, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among your, yourself, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the apostles after themselves. Wow, the disciples after themselves. Therefore watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. He continues in Galatians 1, 6-7, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. Be careful for these with these social gospels and these social type of things and these bringing, you know, community, bringing, it's all community organized and bringing the culture into the church and bringing the popular stuff into the church, bringing in the world to bring in the world. And then there is no difference. And then it says, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want you to 
pervert the gospel of Christ. Timothy also warns of a future apostasy in 2 Timothy 4, 3, and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itchy ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn from their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. There's so many warnings here. Uh, 2 Peter 2, 1 through 3, 1 uh, Timothy 4, 11, and Matthew 24, 11. Then, it's Je- then it says, Jesus himself warned, Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Matthew 24, 11. And then it says, What can we do? Right? So you're going to obviously be in the Word of God. You're going to be praying. Right? And if something doesn't sound right, because you're not going to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. The Bible will lead you, and the Holy Spirit will lead you in all truths, right? So you're going to be in the Word praying, and you'll be able to know the difference between what what sounds like a worldly gospel, and it doesn't sound like the Bible, and it's unbiblical what is happening, and there's nothing in the Bible that can support what is going on, and it becomes a big circus, right? A worldly circus. Now, there's going to be lots of different warnings that are here, and I want you to be able to see this. We're just going to close as the, I love this. It's a good way to think about this. Never forget, there is a way that sounds right to a man, but in the end is the way of death. That's Proverbs 16, 25 and 2 Timothy 15. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Always come from love when speaking with others. Never forget... He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. 1 John 4, 8. So yeah, you're going to be bold in the truth, but it's going to become from a boldness that's in love. So it's going to be leading people to the truth. It's going to be um, exposing the error. And you can do that by using scripture and leading back people back to the word of God where all truth is found. I hope this booklet helps you to stay out of false doctrines. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.